Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsani la yawm al-deen. Allahumma laka alhamd kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhik wa li azimi sultanik la nuhsi thanaan alayk anta kama athnayta ala nafsik Allahumma laka alhamdu hatta tarda wa laka alhamdu idha radit wa laka alhamdu min ba'di rida Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsani ila yawm al-deen Alhamdulillah We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us this opportunity to virtually gather together on on this Friday, that even though we're not physically in the masjid, that every single person who has intended to be in the masjid, that if it wasn't for this situation that we're in, that they would be in the masjid, meaning their heart is there in the masjid, even though their body is physically at home, that that person bi idnillahi ta'ala is being rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they're in the masjid as if they're attending salatul jum'ah as if they are there praying their sunnah as if they are there reading their quran as if they are there remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listening to the khutbah praying the salah getting your lunch after alhamdulillah the intention of wanting to be there of knowing that you would be there if it wasn't for the fact that you staying at home is an act of obedience in and of itself, is an act of ibadah in and of itself, then alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for that blessing. And then alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity through the technology that we have, through the means that we have to then be able to still have a reminder, to be able to still have something that connects us back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a khutbah. So you can you know uh talk as it's happening i'm not saying you should talk you can gather your family together maybe sit together in a way that you normally wouldn't be able to in jumma you know because of of the way that uh the gathering is you you know if you're eating a bowl of cereal no problem alhamdulillah if you have it on the big screen you know one of the younger brothers he put up uh he messaged me uh, after one of the the classes that we had, and he said, "You know, you are on my big screen. You are on you are on TV at my house." I was like, "Okay, that's not. I I don't think that, you know, that's the, me being on TV." But okay, alhamdulillah. So the opportunity is there. You know, if you have your family there at home with you, uh, and maybe they're off doing something else, it's good. Gather them, have them together uh, with you to benefit inshallah and then to be able to to discuss so even though we don't have the normalcy of what we expect to have on a friday on a jumma ah, alhamdulillah we still have so many of the blessings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reinforcing us is reminding us of in these times and that is a a, a huge blessing from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is really the uh, one of the take homes of this entire experience you know i know we're in the midst of it so there's still a lot of like uncertainty and a lot of like i'm not sure what's gonna happen and i don't know you know what exactly to do and and, and a lot of those feelings a lot of those emotions but uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of fitna one of in times of test in times of tribulation where the test is so clear right our entire lives are a test there's no doubt about that but sometimes we get sent tests that really really hit us and that everyone knows and recognizes this is a test right so the good times that you have you know the times of relaxation the times of ease those are tests too but a lot of times we don't recognize them as tests right but in these moments where the, every single person i was just reading subhanallah of, about some doctors in italy who were mentioning how they were staunch atheists before this entire you know uh, pandemic hit but the 
uh, weakness, the fragility that they've seen of human life, that they don't have at, the, at that point anyone to turn to, that it turned them into people who have no other choice except to kind of, you know, let their fitra, let that instinctual uh, nature come out and, and accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just recognize the reality of that. When you have no one else to turn to, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So in these times of, uh, of clear, clear tests, it shows us realities. It shows us how things actually are. Maybe things that we have been deluded about before or that we have fooled even ourselves, right? That we think everything is fine. I can, you know, I don't have to worry about that. You know, you kind of maybe busy yourself to a point that you can conveniently forget some realities and some truths. These tests, they bring us face to face with a lot of those realities. And so what they become is a turning point for us. It's a turning point. It's an inflection point in each and every single one of our lives and in each and every single one of our families. It can be something that makes us or it can be something that breaks us. And this is again what the what the tests do is when they show us who we are, it gives an opportunity to either make a change for the better or it puts us at a point or in a position where we fall even further down and this there's no area where this is more true in than in our families in this time you know i was discussing this with uh, sheikh ruzwan and he sent me some articles and and you know everyone i'm sure everyone has seen the memes for those of you who know what memes are and everyone has you know heard the jokes of you know now i'm finally getting to know my family and i didn't you know uh, day three day four day 10 of quarantine they seem like pretty good people and one of them is you know uh is in school for this meaning like the idea behind it is that they're just starting to learn who their families are they're they're finally you know forced to be in the same household and actually confront each other and actually you know learn about each other right and it's it there's a lot of jest a lot of jokes when it comes to that but there is also a sobering reality when it comes to that and that is you know in some of the articles that that I read and I'm sure you've seen some of these these things on the news as well is that in places where this, uh, you know, the lockdowns or the quarantines have been in effect for a while that they're seeing, like I was reading about specifically in China, that they are seeing divorce rates at an unprecedented, an unprecedented number. And they're seeing, uh, you know, basically the, the breakdown of the family structure. And they had like a question that they put up. And again, probably a lot of this is joking, but there's a lot of reality to it as well. What's the first thing that you're going to do when you get out of lockdown? And the number one answer is get divorced, right? And then you see some of the problems that, again, maybe a lot of times get put under the rug, now are coming to, now are coming out and coming to, you know, out in the open. And so they were saying, you know, how spouses for the first time really got to see, you know, sides of, of their, their family or sides of their spouse that they maybe had known before, but maybe again, they were able to ignore because they don't spend time with each other. They're not around, you know, each other most of the day. So you can tend to ignore that. But then when you're together like that and you start learning about each other, you start learning about things maybe that you know, you had forgotten or that you didn't realize the extent to which they were. Now it was, it's the breakdown of, of the family. And so this test for us is a huge turning point or it can be a huge inflection point for our families, either to cement them and to make them stronger and to build them on foundations of love and of mercy and of compassion and of a desire to cooperate together to work together to become a household that is a household of light a household of goodness a household of peace and tranquility as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended for our households to be for us either it will be that 
or either we will at least start the journey towards that, or we may see similar patterns in our own families, in our own households. Families that may become broken, families that may become splintered, families that may be start or accelerate, I should say, the process of breaking apart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So it's extremely, extremely important for us to realize in these times the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us to work on our families. It's almost as if Allah is telling you, right, that you have this opportunity, the doors are closed, there's nowhere else to go, no family part, no parties, no dawats, no, you know, if you're still having those, we have another bigger problem, right? But now you are forced, you are given a forced opportunity to be with your family. Right, and to spend that time with them, and to work on those relationships with them, and to and to figure out the issues maybe that you have swept under the rug for so long, and to build a routine or a household that has something in it that makes it that place of blessing, that makes it that place of goodness, that makes it that place of of barakah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, with this household. And that's not something, again, that is limited or that is unique to times of fitna, to times of you know uh, fear, to times of being tested. But this is a area that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes to the greatest extent. And that his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized to the greatest extent in general. The importance of our families. How it's a priority for us to put our families first. In fact, on every single Friday, you find, and you, maybe we pay attention to it, maybe we don't. But when that Jum'ah is happening, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to return to the masajid and allow us to have a Jum'ah again and allow us to benefit from it and allow it to be something that we are not uh, you know, taken away from. And every single Friday, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start with the ayah of Surah An-Nisa. Ya ayyuha nas ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa attaqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is reminding all of humanity, and He's telling us where our origins are from, and He's telling us what the foundation of the family structure is, and then He's telling us what تقو الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام. Take care of these two things. Be conscious of these two things. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your relationship with Him. And be conscious of your family ties. Take care of your families. Make sure that that is a priority for you. And this is not something that's strange. This is something that from the beginnings of Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling to. From the beginnings of his message, there was an emphasis on family. In fact, before the rulings of zakah, the rulings of salah, the ruling of hajj came, there are the rulings and there are the emphasis on maintaining the ties of kinship. And so it's something that is of extreme, extreme importance. And it's something that defines our goodness. And it's something that defines our position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person cannot be a successful or a believer who is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimately pleased with if that is not someone who is giving their family their rights. If that is not someone who is not taking care of the responsibilities that their family is is owed. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he clearly, clearly states that to us. He tells us, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ He says, the best of you if you want to know who is the best, who is the, the most complete in terms of their belief, 
who is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us a characteristic that if you want to, you can weigh yourself against it, you can measure yourself against it and see where am I when it comes to my goodness. He says, Khayrukum, Khayrukum li ahli. The best of you is the one who is best to their family. But he doesn't just leave it there for us. He gives us then the roadmap, the blueprints. How can I be good to my family? What's the way that, what's a model that I can look at? He says, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And I am the best of you to my family. And I am the example to you to show you how to be with your family. And I know a lot of times the response that comes to this, and it is a legitimate response. The response that comes to this is, but you don't know my family. You don't know what I'm dealing with with my own family. You don't know what I have to, uh, you know, you don't know that, you know, my kids don't listen to me. My parents do this. My, they're, you know, they, they tell me to do things that they themselves don't practice. My siblings have cut me off. Whatever it may be that there are, uh, you know, the, the, the common, response or the common retort is but my family is different it's a different like it's not like your family right and then they point to like some idealized version of what a family is is supposed to look like and there's no doubt and i'm and and this is a a very very clear disclaimer that if there are issues of course of abuse and, and of things that are beyond the pale in terms of you know, uh, physical abuse and emotional abuse and these things, that is definitely something that needs to be addressed. And that's not something that we just say, oh, no, 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 just be good with your family and that those, those things will go away. No, we don't, uh, we don't just put those things to the side. But what we're talking about generally is that if you look, there is not a single ideal family. This concept of our family, well, my family is just different, you don't know. That is something that's very, very interestingly addressed in the Qur'an. In fact, if you look through the familial relationships that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us as examples in the Qur'an, you will find that almost every single family situation in the Qur'an, that there was some sort of problematic relationship. There was something that a person, and generally, usually as a prophet of Allah, is struggling with when it came to their family. Whether it's the sons of Adam, one kills the other. Whether it's the son of Nuh, who disbelieves in him. His own wife disbelieves in him. Whether it's the, the father of Ibrahim, yani his own father is the idol maker of the town, and he's the one who is threatening to stone him, right? Whether you have Lut alayhi salam, whose wife, his own wife, is supporting the ones that are on, you know, that have disbelieved, the ones who have fought against him, the ones who are, who are you know, not accepting him. You have Musa alayhi salam, who has the worst stepfather in, in all of history. Right, and then you have even our own Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whose uncle is the very first one who, when he makes that call on Safa, his uncle is the first one who curses him and turns away from him and calls others to turn away from him. So what we find is that Allah subhanahu wa taala is showing us through these the best of His creation that the family the family unit is not always ideal, and yet you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts extra emphasis on the family in the ayah that we mentioned. And you find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam puts extra emphasis on how we are with our families. And that shows us that even though if our family situations are not ideal and they will never be ideal, there is still an ideal way to deal with our families that the prophets teach us. That our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam showed us that he lived for us. And so it's something that we can put that excuse to the side generally. As I said, there's exceptions, of course, but generally we put that excuse to the side and we say that 
regardless of my family situation, of what the difficulties that I'm going through, I am going to do my best to try to be the best family member I can to my family. And that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Allah has chosen specifically who your family members are. That's not something that you choose generally. You don't choose your parents. You don't choose your children. You don't choose your siblings. That's something that's chosen by you or for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that, there should be a level of recognition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put these people in my life in order for me to be a source of benefit for them, in order for them to benefit me, in order for us to grow together. And the idea is that we all, inshallah, uh, that we are, that we make it to Jannah together. And then in Jannah, all of that, you know, those... Uh, <laughs> problems, those arguments, those disagreements. I don't like this quality about them. This They annoy me when they do this. All of that will be removed. And in fact, the beauty of that is that in, in Jannah, that each person, that the families will be reunited. And so you may have this relative of yours who is, you know, this is this person is, is a lot better of a person than me and they made it to a higher level in Jannah. Inshallah, you'll be able to uh, make it to that level uh, you'll be able to to be with them in that level, but we all we all have to get there together first. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to get there with our loved ones. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to get there with those who uh, are in our family, those who have become our family, and all those who are part of our communal family. And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he shows us so beautifully how to be a family member who is a source of goodness, who is a source of khair. And there is this misconception that my family is a roadblock to my spirituality, that my family distracts me from coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not the case. In fact, your family is one of your greatest ways to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see that through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through his actions, in that even in his acts of ibadah that are so sacred, you find that he involved his family. That he's in i'tikaf and he puts, and he's in i'tikaf away from his family. And yet he would take the time, he would have his, where he's staying in i'tikaf, connected or close to where his house is so that he would basically put his head inside of his home and Aisha radiallahu anha would like comb his hair and fix his hair and he would be able to speak with her. That you find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is giving the khutbah on Jum'ah and when you're not even allowed to talk and he's standing at the minbar and he sees his grandson Hassan in front of him crawling and so he actually gets down from the minbar, goes to him, picks him up kisses him tells the the jama'a this is my this is hada inna hada ibni sayyid this is my grandson he is a, going to be a leader he is a leader he's going to be a leader in this world and a leader in jannah right and then he and then he puts him down and he goes back up to the minbar and he continues his khutbah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he's showing us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that your family is not a liability for you. Your family is one of your greatest opportunities to enter into Jannah. And so I will just mention a few of the advices that we were given and that we see also in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially in these times when we're all kind of, uh, you know, forced to be together for better or for worse that uh, to, to be able to, to, to benefit from this time, to build our relationship as, uh, as a family and to allow this to be a turning point for us to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for us to, to cement our family ties and to at least start the process of being together as family members, as people who are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some of the... Uh, I'll mention a couple inshallah is having time uh, to communicate you know yes we are in the same house together but with Netflix with the internet I I'm surprised alhamdulillah that it still hasn't gone out yeah from the amount of uh, of pressure that it's taken that but um, 
with all of these, uh, even though we have this opportunity, we have a lot of distractions as well. So having time to communicate together as a family. I know for a lot of people that sounds awkward. And it doesn't mean you have to just get around in a circle and say everyone share your feelings. But it means having times, for example, that you have a meal together. You know, um, I had it here that the there was at Columbia University they did a study that a family that just ate one meal together that they had a much higher uh, you know they they had a much higher chance and percentage of being a healthy and happier family so eating a meal together if that's not something that you already do you know when we're when we were busy everyone is just eating together doing their own thing uh, eating separately doing their own thing eating on the go now inshallah you have that opportunity so having at least one meal together sitting together we have something better than even having a meal together praying salah together after this for example that you can go and you can pray salat al-dhuhr together in jama'ah right no not jama'ah this is not a, a jama'ah khutbah right but you're going to pray salat you can pray salat al-dhuhr together sitting together and benefiting from something right even if it's one thing a day whether it's one family member they go and they get you know you start with the series that for example that Sheikh Rizwan is doing you start listening or reading a seerah book together and you share something having something that you're doing together as a family that is beneficial that is beneficial which takes me to number two which is that it doesn't always have to be something and to spend that time together doesn't always have to be something that is quote unquote religiously oriented meaning you can play a game together you can enjoy go on a uh, on a walk together socially distanced all that stuff it can be something where you have fun together right if it's in a acceptable way and you're spending time together as family number three is you can embrace uh, this your space you know being around someone 24 hours a day is probably not the best way to uh, you know to, to improve the, the relationship so if you need your space take your space right but again remember you know, having your alone time having your own personal goals your own personal projects that allows you to kind of maintain that uh that sanity and maintain you know a, a good relationship with with the rest of your with the rest of your family and then if you are recognizing that there are things that you really need to work on as a family that may even require outside help there's nothing wrong and it's still an opportunity in this times even to maybe reach out and get that help right to reach out and get that help whether it's through therapy online and I know that may sound kind of weird but it's something that that is available, that's there, and it's something that shouldn't be stigmatized. It's something that could be beneficial, and now you have everyone there, generally, right, that you can get that help, whether it's for spouses, whether it's for parents and their children, but at least you're putting in an effort. You're putting in an effort to come closer to each other, and as a result of coming closer to each other, Inshallah, that's a way for you to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from those who are the best because we are best to our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the shortcomings that we have in dealing with our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this time an opportunity for us to repair, to fix, to cement our relationships with our family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that anyone from our families who are sick that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures them that anyone from our families and then from our community and from you know all of our ummah that has passed away that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on them we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everyone who is suffering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases their suffering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts this disease this pandemic from us there are specific dua requests as well uh brother sayyid uh sayyid ali bukhari uh the father of I think yeah the uh sayyid ashiq ali bukhari the father of one of our community members he passed away uh in uh, overseas and he's requesting that we make dua for him so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him as well to have mercy upon him and then as well one of our sisters 
uh, you may have you know heard for the past you know year over a year someone who was battling with uh, leukemia uh, she passed away sister Lena uh, the relative of some of our community members as well she passed away uh, yesterday as well and uh, you know we wanted to make dua for her as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on her and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters both of them and again enters all of those who have passed away from the Muslims our close family members, our far family members, our community members, our ummah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them, benefits from the time that you have with your family, uh, even if it's something small. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.